Shadow Run on the Super Nintendo is a game where you hire people to follow you around until there's something genuinely threatening, in which case they'll say, I think I've earned my money, Jake. See you later. Hey, I'm Jason Graves, and never trust anyone that needs a haircut. Since the inception of the live system in video games, death would represent the end of 99% of your virtual avatar's journeys. Death is the most frequent outcome when you pick up the controller. When you play a game normally, where you die is when you stop. In Shadowrun, the death of our hero marks the dawn of his shady odyssey. Shadowrun is a game that takes place post-life, in extra time. It's a game that happens after the point at which most stories end. The metaphorical glass is shattered and it's your job as a player to recover the fragments and cement their implications. The process of doing this reveals the game's true colors as a personal computer style point and click adventure masquerading, moonlighting as a Super Nintendo role playing game. Here's a small demo of what it's like to engage in a gunfight with this game. I like to imagine that aiming your gun this way was the developer's way of emulating the feeling of the frantic, kinetic anxiety of what it's like to swiftly pull your gun out from a holster and lock onto a target. When the bullet hits the bone, this is a PC-style game running on the Super Nintendo. That alone is deserving of my applause, but what I really admire about this game is how it melds itself into the RPG genre so well. You have actual decisions to make when leveling up your stats. Do you want a character that focuses on firing guns or firing spells? Early on, I was at the obligatory RPG arena section and wasn't strong enough to hold my own in the fights. A real question I had to ask myself is if I would rather upgrade my weapon accuracy or my maximum hit points. How you level yourself never changes the bottom line. Most fights, no. Not only most fights, most boss fights are an exercise of standing still and pressing A. Most of the boss fights may be just like the one I showed you, but the final boss isn't. Allow me to introduce the final boss, unedited in its entirety. As you may or may not be aware, before it was a Super Nintendo game, Shadowrun was a Dungeons & Dragons style pen and paper RPG. As scandalous as it might be to admit this, I have never played any pen and paper RPGs. I'm sorry if that makes me a horrible fraud whenever I try to say anything with any kind of conviction when talking about any RPG at all, but it's true, I've never played any pen and paper RPG. I have nothing against playing a pen and paper RPG, it's just that they require other people to play them. I spend most of my time alone, and when I'm with other people, they're generally not the Dungeons and Dragon types. I'll admit that these types of games are the most pure role-playing experiences, and by not having any experience with them, I'm forfeiting my authority that I may have at one time had. Allow me to regain any lost respects my previous statements have garnered. My Shadowrun on Super Nintendo experience does not exist in a complete vacuum of ignorance. Did you know that there were three Shadowrun games released in the 1990s, and that I've played all three of them? I played through and experienced every inch of Shadowrun on the Sega Genesis ten years ago when I was in high school. It's an exercise of endless adventure by way of its randomly generated quests. 
While the Super Nintendo game isn't as replayable or as addicting as its rival edition, it more than makes up for it with its sheer personality and sometimes very well planned out adventure game elements. The third Shadowrun game was on Sega CD. It was released only in Japan and, if I'm being honest, I've never played that game. But wait a second, I know I just said that I've played all three of them, but the third game I was referring to there was not Shadowrun on the Sega CD, it was Nightshade on the NES. Both Nightshade and the Super Nintendo Shadowrun were made by Beam Software. More specifically, they were directed by a man named Paul Kidd. He would leave game development entirely shortly after these games' releases in favor of writing novels. If you're a fan of the Oni Plays Let's Play channel, he also wrote the Lord of the Rings text game they made famous. Nightshade has a subtitle. It's called Nightshade Part 1. When people talk about that game, they normally follow it up with something to the effect that they never made a part 2. Shadowrun on the Super Nintendo is Nightshade Part 2. They both take place on a not-too-distant futuristic Earth and have magical elements. Shadowrun has orcs, dwarves, and sexualized fox women, while Nightshade has walking rat men, sexualized ninja women, and talking cats. They're both genre-bending mishmashes, Shadowrun being a point-and-click RPG, and Nightshade being a point-and-click fighting game. Shadowrun fulfills the promise of a Nightshade 2. Just like its predecessor, you need to comb every inch of the world, because if you don't, you will miss things. I hope you didn't miss the scalpel in the first room of the game, because if you did, you won't be opening this door in a cemetery later on. You can easily miss that this game expects you to follow this punk into an alleyway, or the key sitting on this shelf, or that you can interact with these spots on the wall. Speaking of things that are easily missed, did you know that if you don't press start, then it plays a cutscene that actually explains what happens before the game starts? You get gunned down and this fox woman comes to cast a spell on you. If you're anything like me, you didn't know this until after beating the game and doing research for this video. This game does the Majora's Mask thing, where it doesn't let you save until you feel around and figure out a segment of the opening space. In Zelda, you have an entire three-day cycle to figure out how to get your ocarina back before the game lets you save. Shadowrun doesn't have a hard timer like that, but it does have a soft one in the form of your health bar. There's no consistent way to heal yourself until you regain access to your apartment, which also doubles as your first save point. Later, there's a similar scenario involving a bomb squatting inside your brain, threatening to blow you up in 30 in-game hours. During this part, wisely, the game doesn't let you save. You play as a man named Jake. Atypical to the traditional RPG customs, you cannot rename Jake. He is the most unpopular man in video game history. Everywhere you go, people indiscriminately careen a constant flood of kinetic metallic capsules in an attempt to bankrupt your purse of collective life force. All of this goes to show that in 2050, there will be no law in Seattle, Washington. Shadowrun portrays an America plunged into pure anarchy. It's a good thing you can hire guns to follow you around. You can still only control Jake, but your hired guns are better than you and make the game easier because unlike you, they automatically target threats the cold-blooded second the enemy insults your presence by their mere lives purpose. Most of the time, or at least in any modern game that's this open and expansive, they would be cordial enough to provide you with a map. Heck, if you're Grand Theft Auto V or Red Dead Redemption 2, they literally mean provide you with a physical map. But Shadowrun on the Super Nintendo isn't so cordial. Not having a map for this game forces you to burn the image into your brain as you play. Your virtual counterpart has a brain too. It's capable of obtaining rudimentary conversational skills. This game uses a Final Fantasy 2S keyword system, although in Shadowrun it's used to a much greater effect. You need to ask everyone about every keyword, or risk losing your breadcrumb trail forward. The keyword system leads to this weird glitch that I exploited to get a lot of money and level up my stats. 
There's this vampire that you need to interrogate to get this particular keyword, and the game continuously respawns him if you don't know the word. After you've exhausted the usefulness of a certain word, the game automatically deletes it from your inventory. After using the word and having it automatically deleted, I returned to kill this vampire so many times that it would cause the Belmont clan to hide in shame if they knew about 10% of the vampires I hunted. Normally when you play an RPG on the Super Nintendo, the text would have had to have been translated from Japanese. Shadowrun's original language was English, and it's refreshing to play a game that wasn't filtered through a translator. I love Ted Woosley as much as the next guy, but there's a different feeling when you're reading the text in its intended language. While I like the dialogue, the plot doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a dragon, and I, I guess you were supposed to deliver a program to the supercomputer. I'm not really sure what was supposed to happen. I guess the plot is something like this drag. No, not the dragon. You're hired, I think, to carry a virus to a supercomputer at this corporation. But this dragon named Drake hires a, a hit team to kill you. So they do. But, like, you knew about this plot ahead of time, so you hired this fox woman to, like, cast a spell and bring you back to life, like, right when it happens. And... That's it? I... I think that's it. I don't really think I'm missing any nuance. That's really... Like, that's the whole game. And... Well, I'm out of things to say if you can't tell. I'm going off script. So, I'll leave you with this video that I found. It's a promotional video for Shadowrun when it first came out. And remember to subscribe 20 times and bye bye. No problem. Oh, who goes there? Just what are you doing? Let's get out of here now!